पहली गल जी मैं दसनी है गल दसम ग्रंथ जी गल हैगी डूगी गल हों उदा जे सू समझ इना गल सू पूछना पैदे इतिहास हो लोगों को जो तो मैं यंग मुंडा सर मैं पहला सारे होर तलम की मैं खोज की टाइम तो मैं जो तो खोज की मैं अपने आप पूछा सर ये दसम ग्रंथ की आ चीज फिर मैं सवाल पूछे से काफ़ी लोगों ने वो सवाल को दस नहीं हुए थे तो मैं वो टाइम तो मैं आप सोचा तो मैं ही चल देख आंसर लभदा हाँ दसम ग्रंथ बारे तो मैं हूँ आ साल या नैक्सट साल में मैं किताब भी छपनी हाँ दसम ग्रंथ बारे ना अज हूँ जो मैं प्रजेंटेन करना इंग्लिश करना फिर जो मगरों किसने संगत में जी मैं कोई क्वेश्चन पूछना हो मगर फिर आप गल कर सकते हैं ओके पहली गल द फर्स्ट थिंग वी शुड से अबाउट द दसम ग्रंथ इज द स्टोरी ऑफ द सीक्स स्टॉप विद एक ओंकार जप जी साहब in the first bani of guru granth sahib starts with jap ji sahib so therefore it's ek omkar the same cosmology in the guru granth sahib is exactly the same as in the sri dasam granth as well ek omkar that's why when guru gobind singh wrote the jap sahib he wrote ek omkar at the start as well that is the first point what we find is when guru gobind singh maharaj is actually completing the guru granth sahib He is actually formulating his next step towards the Sri Dasam Granth. And what he is doing is he is changing the formula of the Sikhs from Sant Ras to Biras, which is the saintly world that the Sikhs of present have lived in, to the worldly knowledge and to the actual warrior ways of the Sikhs. The manuscript that you see in front of you there is a old recension of Das um, Guru Granth Sahib. Which has the dasgat of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj on it as well. It's a very rare dust, uh, Guru Granth Sahib um, bani in there. What we find is Guru Gobind Singh is trying to get the Sikhs to change their character, like I said, from Shantaras to Biras. And what we have now is is two areas where he is trying to obtain different kinds of poetry at these various locations. The two locations are Anandpur Sahib and Ponta Sahib as well. Whenever you go to Ponta Sahib, there's a massive board there, which you can see there. And on the board, it actually even cites the bani of which has been written at Ponta Sahib itself. Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj was a very clever, worldly leader that this world has never ever seen before. He wanted to make sure that all the Sikhs had the knowledge, the gyan. to be able to actually deal with the further problems that the Sikhs would have what guru gobind singh maharaj did was at anandpur sahib and ponta sahib was to actually collect a number of poets he wanted to actually decipher the meanings of the hindu myths into the common language the poets of guru gobind singh include dekhan painand lal kan kan alam Keshav Lal and many many others as well. I think there's been a wrong interpretation in terms of how many poets there's been of Guru Gobind Singh's court. Some people say there was 50, some people say there was 70, some people say 52. What modern research shows is that the poets of Guru Gobind Singh numbered up to 125. This includes the kavis, the likharis, the people who used to write the hukam nama. So therefore, there was a broad range of poets within the whole Darbar of Guru Gobind Singh. What we tend to find is the actual writings of the poets of Guru Gobind Singh are totally different in nature to the Bani of Dasam Bhasha, and that this is a very important aspect to understand because many many people think that the poets wrote the Bani. which is now what we see in the dasam granth however that is not the case the poets of guru gobind singh wrote in a totally different style in different way and also what we find with the poets is that they all praised guru gobind singh after writing their stories or their reinterpreted myths so what we see here in front of you is two actual 
manuscripts which were well, the one on the left hand side was one of the Mahabharat which was written by Kavi Deccan and Kavi Deccan within the, within the actual Darbar of Guru Gobind Singh wrote the reinterpretation of these myths so therefore they could actually be actually utilised within the Darbar itself. Another area which uh, Deccan wrote was a Smed Paka or Bava should we say which is based on war sacrifice. So what we see is all these different kind of themes being written in the, Durga, in the Darbar of Guru Gobind Singh. <coughs> now we turn to the internal evidence within the Dasam Grant itself. What we tend to find is that um, Banya like Jab Sahib, Akal Ustad, Suwaye have no date within them written. And this is very, very interesting. Because the people who say that Guru Gobind Singh didn't write Krishna Avtar, Ram Avtar, Chitta Pakyan cannot actually tell us when Japsa was written. But yet we have the dates for Krishna Avtar, Ram Avtar, Chitta Pakyan as well. And the important thing to note is Bajitta Natak itself cross references itself to verse of the Baniya within the Dasam Granth. So we know, just from internal evidence, that the writer of the Dasam Granth is one person, that's one person, one genius, one poet, Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj himself. There was a study done in the 1900s by Dr. Dharam Pal Ashta. And what he did was he compared the Baniya in the secular verses like Jab Sab, Kalustat, with, what we would say, the other Baniya, like Ramtar, Chitta Pakyan, and others. And his conclusion was, there are similar lines in the, what we call the Amrit kind of Baniyas, and exact, exactly the same as there is within what we call the mythological concepts as well. So again, that shows us the internal evidence that the writer of these lines is the same. I'm going to turn now to some of the dates within the das Dasam Granth itself and the one first that we see is of Jirtil Pakyan. What we find internally is that the Jirtil Pakyan compilation of Dasam Granth was completed on Sunday, the 8th day of the month of London in 1753, Bikram Samad, August 24th, AD 1696 on the banks of the river Sutherland. Clear date for everyone to see. We can also look at Ram of Dar as well. The grant has been complete and improved in Vadi, first in the month of Asar, in the year 1755-1698. If there's remained any error in it, then kindly correct it, and so forth. Again, Krishna of Dara itself, we have a clear dating in there. This work has been completed in the year 1745 of the Wicklum era in the Suddhi aspect of the moon in the month of Savan, July 1688 AD, clear date. In the town of Ponta, the spacious hour on the banks of the flowing Yamna. I want to make a slight deviation here, but just to actually state, Guru Gobind Singh, when he used to compose his poetry, he used to do it actually based on the banks of rivers. That's why you see the word Yamna and other kind of rivers being noted within the Baniya itself. Very, very important aspect to note there. What we find is that when you look at Dasam Granth itself, there is certain aspects called the Bajitta Natak. The Bajitta Natak Granth composes of itself various several bodies within the Dasam Granth. And what we're finding is the Bajitta Natak Granth was one of the grants that Guru Gobind Singh had composed. And then on top of that, he added his Jabsa, Kalustat, and the Chandi Chiritras on top of that as well. Now this is a very rare picture that you have in front of us there. It is Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj sitting of the Pai Mani saying, what is he doing? We don't know, but it could be the actual dictation of the Dasam Granth to Pai Mani saying. A very old picture there. There's been considerable research done on the original Dasam Granth manuscripts that we actually find in the world and that's been taking place over many, many, many years. I'm going to go through briefly through some of these. As we know, the the Dasam Granth actually started written during the time of Guru Gobind Singh, but what we find is the actual compilation may differ actually from the time itself. 
One of the first bead or recensions of Dasam Ras is what called Anandpuri bead, which is, has internal datings of 1695 and 1696 as well. Now, this is important because there's many people who say Pai Mani Singh bead is the first bead that was actually written. That is not quite correct because the Anandpuri bead is one of the first, but it is a work in progress. It's not a completed version, but it is the first and one of the most important beads of the Dasam Granth itself. We also are aware of other beads as well. Patna Saab itself has many, many different types of Dasam Granth manuscripts, and one is dated around the time of 1698. The Pai Manising bead is infamous in terms of its combination of Ard Granth and Dasam Granth we say is around about completed around 1720. But it's important to know, Pai Mani Singh B is composed of Ard Granth and Dasam Granth itself. But I will talk a bit more about that in a second. We also find that the Pai Mani Singh B is not alone in terms of the way it's actually written, in terms of Ard Granth and Dasam Granth being together. So there's a Sangru B which is written almost at a similar time, also composed of that of a similar nature. We also have a rare occasion of actually have, having to see the Baba Deep Singh Dasam Granth as well, which is, we believe, an 18th century recension. And again, another recension of Dasam Granth is Patna Missal Dasam Granth, dated 1765. In a Hajur there's also a collection of manuscripts up in that location, which again, we can date to be very, very early. Okay, firstly we have the Anandpuri bead. The Anandpuri bead has, like I said earlier on, two dated of 1695 and 1696. I'm a bit reluctant to put my light on this, but there we have Guru Gobind Singh's actual writing within the actual Anandpuri bead itself. So that's when I said earlier on that this is a work in progress Dasam Granth manuscript. The Pai Mani Singh bead is also unusual in the fact, like I said, it's combined of Ard Guru Granth and Dasam Granth as well. So what we have within this actual manuscript is Bhai Mani Singh's recension is actually written in Guru order. So we start with Mahamla 1, finishing off with Dasam Pasha's Bani, finishing off with the Bhagat Bani. Some people say this is a desecration of the Guru Granth Sahib itself. I personally think that was not a desecration, it was an actual learning process for Sikhs to understand that in order to understand Guru Sahib's Bani, it should actually be written in the order after the original Gurus itself. That's why it is a very, very important bead. This is actually now located in Hanuman Road, Delhi itself and can be inspected. Baba Deep Singh, as we know, great martyr of the Sikhs. But again, the instruction by Guru Gobind Singh was to actually have various learning centres across Punjab and the Dum Dum Ni Taksar who now actually <coughs> venerate the Dasam Granth totally and who actually have their lineage from Baba Deep Singh. Again we see a Gutka which is attributed to Baba Deep Singh. Again we claim this to be very early. The Patna Mesut bead which we talked about clearly has a dating in there of 1765. But the important aspect of this bead is look at the way it's now the beads have actually started actually being decorated in a sense. It's got some gold within it as well. The important aspect is that whilst the manuscripts of Dasam Granth were being written, the actual compositions of Dasam Granth were also being written within certain Bhutis and Gutke as well. Now, what you see in front of you there is the Jab Saab being written within a Bhutti dated 1718, and that also contains a Tankhanama of Pahinandala within that as well. So a very early Bhoti with Jav Saab in it. Jirithyo Pakyan, people seem to have problems with Jirithyo Pakyan. No problems at all. We even have independent Bhotis of Jirithyo Pakyan. This particular one, dated 1723, we actually think this actual Bhoti was actually contained within a quiver when the Khalsa went to do their jam. And that's why we think this could be Tarkas Kipoti, which means that it was kept within the quiver when the Khalsa went to battle. 
It is quite clear, when the Sikhs were in battle, they could not take whole ascensions of guns with them. So that's why they actually made them smaller, so they could actually take them out in battle. Very important manuscript. What we're finding then is that the Bani of Guru, uh, of Guru Granth Sahib and the Bani of Dasam Granth is now actually becoming more and more popular by the time of 1736. And this important manuscript actually has Bani again from Guru Granth Sahib and Dasam Granth. However, what's important about this actual manuscript is that the actual writer itself has actually taken select portions from Guru Granth Sahib and select portions from Dasam Granth which means the actual writer itself was very, very clever in actually knowing the Bani of Dasam Granth was prevalent throughout the Sikhs at that particular time. The birth of the Nithinam at an early period had started at this point. We've just looked at some of the manuscript sources and looked at some of the Bhutia and the Gurdjie as well. However, there's numerous historical sources which actually mention the compositions of Dasam Granth. The first one, Rasul by Sinabad, 1711, does not mention actual compositions, but the way Sinabad has actually written the Rasul is in the style and in the meters of the Dasam Granth itself. People say the Pachitta Natak was not written by Guru Gobind Singh. The Rasul written several years after the demise of Guru Gobind Singh, is virtually a copy of Pachitta Natak itself. Sikhiyani Bhagatmala, very, very important manuscript um, attributed to Bhai Mani Singh. What Bhai Mani Singh is actually saying is that Guru Gobind Singh has written three types of Baniya. First is Yodhme Bani, which is the art of war compositions, Sansar Me Bani, which is Jirithya Bhakyan, and Amrit Me Bani, which is Savaiya, etc. So Sikhiyani Bhagatmala actually gives us clear reasons why Das Samgrat was written by Guru Gobind Singh. Gurdalas Pasha Dasvi by Paul Singh again quotes from Krishna of Dhar and various other um, compositions of Dasam Granth as well. Bansavi Lama, very important, Jibbar Singh, writing in 1769 or starting in 1769, tells us why the Dasam Granth was created, why Bani, Bani, Bani Singh had tried to collect the recensions of Bhutiyan to make his version of the Dasam Granth. <coughs> Guru Gisakya, 1790, again actually looks at various different types of compositions that were written by Guru Gobind Singh. I will talk in, about this manuscript in a second. Red Name, again, the Red Name have various actual compositions of Dasam Granth mentioned within it. By Paideya Singh, Red Nama, mentions Jav Sav, mentions various other compositions of Dasam Granth. Bhai Desa Singh Red Nama, again, Chopa Singh Red Nama contains virtually every single composition of Dasam Granth within the Red Nama itself, early 18th century. Bhai Nandlal, again, Red Nama contains the Bani of Dasam Granth in there. And Prem Samara Granth, which is a different style of Red Nama, again has salutations to Bhattachanadak at the start of that. I'm going to go back to Bansavi Nama for a minute. Bansavi Nama says that throughout the Dasam Granth compositions are being quoted. Bansavi Nama actually tells us that the role of Bhai Mani Singh in collecting the works of Guru Gobind Singh and even tells us the number of verses Guru Gobind Singh has collected. Main important part is it quotes many of the Dasam Granth Baniyam. However, one of the most important aspects of the Bansavi Nama is actually what status the Dasam Granth has been given. This quote from there, in 1658, when the year passed, the Ard Granth was born in the house of Guru Arjan Dev. This Granth Sahib was born, the midwife of Bhai Gurdas described, who was the last like the nurse. The younger Granth, Shota Granth, Dasam Granth, was born in the house of the tenth in, in the year 1755 by many nurses and many poets, and the master greatly loved it. By his own hands it was written. He nurtured it. The Sikhs prayed, gave a task, and said, let's combine this with the previous grant. Guru Sahib gave his command that this is the grant Sahib and this is my kale, my sport. 
However, the Sikhs felt the sport was so important that even that had to be venerated. And the most important part is this. Guru Sahib says, don't combine this loved one. Who will appreciate the distinction? Both, so both Granth Sahib are Guru. That's what Guru Sahib is saying. So both Granth Sahibs are Guru. The elder amongst two priests is the anointed Guru. Woodgar's Portis, which I've already described, contains writing from both Grants, recognize as sons and grandsons. Now it's interesting to me because some people have done some research on Dasan Grant and who are trying to portray as not being the body of Guru Gobind Singh only cite the first two paragraphs. They deny that third paragraph exists. However, it's quite clear that they've intentionally misled the public by deliberately taking out the third paragraph, which clearly says, so both Grant's Grant sides are Guru. I mentioned earlier on Guru Kisakya refers to the compilation of Dasan Grant Bani's. Now what Sarup Singh is doing in Guru Kisakya, he is actually telling us after each Bani what is actually happening in the Guru's period. So when he talks about the compilation of Krishna of Dar, Jirta for instance, he's actually also telling us what is happening in Sikh history. Very, very important. Again, Guru Kisakya explains the reason for the court of the Guru and Dasan Grant Baniya are quoted throughout as well. So, before we even get to the time of Ranjit Singh, before 1800, we have numerous sources which tell us that the Dasan Grant was created by Guru Gobind Singh in the areas of Anantapur, Punta Saab. Various different manuscripts are there, Uti are there, Burtke are there. All the Sikh sources mention the Dasan Grant compositions somewhere before the 1800. So, I could actually stop my lecture now and not go any further because we now can prove that Guru Gobind Singh wrote the Dasam Granth. However, I'll continue. What we find in the Rajneeting period is several things. The Akali Nahams are actually in charge of the actual Akal Bunga or Akal Takta as we now call it. We look at Malcolm's observations with regards to the Dasam Granth. And there's a painting by a Hungarian who actually shows us how the Prakash Dasanam may have been done. And we also look at why Ranjit Singh is the patron of the arts. And then finally, I'm just going to consider the grants when they were taken in battle, what was the situation at that time. What we have here is a picture of Kali Fula Singh. And what Kali Fula Singh was Jatidar of the Nahangs, but he was also Jatidar of the Akal Bunga as well. So, if you had wanted initiation into the Khalsa Pant, you had to go to the Akal Bunga to actually have the Bani's read out and for you to become a Khalsa Singh. Because the Nahangs also venerate Dasan Granth now, we have to presume at the time Akali Fula Singh had the Dasan Granth and the Guru, Guru, Guru Granth Sahib together. We are fully aware that the Nahangs also believe in the Sabro Granth as well, which is also a very, very important topic but we cannot discuss at this time. So if Akali Fula Singh is the Jatadar of the Nahangs, so therefore there should be no problems if anyone tells us afterwards that both grants were kept there as Guru. However, just before I turn to Malcolm's observations, I want to actually point to a, a rare manuscript which was around the 1830s, and we now actually see decorated Dasan grants being available now. This Dasan grant here on the right-hand side that you can see is actually kept with the Buddha Dal and Hang Singhs. So what does Malcolm tell us, who is a visitor to Punjab at this particular time? He tells us when a Guru Matta or great national council is called, when any imminent danger, danger threatens the country or any large expedition is to be undertaken, all the Sikhs chiefs assemble at Amritsar. The assembly which is called Guru Matta is convened by the Akalis themselves. So what happens at this point is, when the chiefs and principal leaders are seated, the Ard Grant and Dasan Pashaka Grant are placed before them. They all bend their heads before these scriptures and exclaim, Why would you keep Khalsa? Why would you keep Fateh? And this is the important bit because what we're saying is the Dasan Grant is not to be prakashed within Harmanda Sahib itself. The Dasan Grant is Bilas Bani, which is there to be venerated within the Akal Takht. And that's why when Malcolm goes and visits, 
the Sikhs in Amritsar. He can actually see the Dasam Granth with the Nahams, away from Harman Nisar, but within the complex of Akal Bunga. This rare painting here, it shows what looks like to be two Granths sitting side by side. Ranjit Singh is actually sitting here, listening to what we consider to be the Bani, the Nahangs here as well. What we see is Harmanta Sahib right at the back, so again, the Biras Bani, the Yudme Bani as we say, is being completely um, overhauled or actually explained away from the Santras of uh, Harmanta Sahib itself. What we're finding is Ranjit Singh actually created many, many different manuscripts within his time because he was a patron of the arts. By the time the Sikhs had actually got to the point where the Missal period had finished, the Sikhs were now in a better position to make sure that their grants were actually decorated. This Dasam Granth, in the dated around the 1830s in the British Library itself, is one of those actual manuscripts. It is actually what we call Kashmiri style manuscript. Kashmiri style manuscripts were different style of manuscripts which Ranjit Singh himself made sure that everyone actually could see. And also what we find is that these various manuscripts were taken all around the world. And that included England. Again, what we're finding with Ranjit Singh is that we have clear evidence how the Dasam Granth was actually created or what it was, its role was within the time period of Ranjit Singh. He states, Ibrut Nama Ali Ud who actually writes, Ranjit Singh was always attended on his tours by a priest with a volume of each of the two chief scriptures, Ard Granth and Dasam Granth. They were wrapped up in rich pieces of silk, placed in a cot under a big canopy, and thus borne from one place to another. A special military escort was provided to each member of which carried a Sikh banner. The procession was often followed by a number of priests on elephants. Besides this, every regiment had its own volumes of the grants. Let me repeat that again. Every regiment had its own volume of the grants and religious signature. Insignia, sorry. Even the ministers of state carried separate copies of the grants on their journeys. Now this is very, very important because what Ranjit Singh is now actually doing is ensuring that the Khalsa Commonwealth is now protected by both grants, Guru Granth Sahib and Dasam Granth. You've heard already today from some of the speakers who say where there could have been a debate started within who wrote the Dasam Granth. What we, what I think has been the case is that Many of the um, ideas of people actually saying that the Dasam Granth was not written by Guru Gobind Singh actually starts in the late 15th, 1850s, and this is by the British. This Kadav here, The History of the Sikhs by J.D. Cunningham, actually starts off by actually writing that it's the Bani of Guru Gobind Singh is by Ram and Shah. Prior to that, no one has ever written that the Bani of, of Dasam Granth is written by anybody else. This is the first kitab which actually mentions that Dasam Granth possibly, maybe, was not written by Dasam Granth, by Guru Gobind Singh. Now this is a very, a very important document which I found recently. Um, it was actually written from a Kaal Bunga. It even has the stamp of a Kaal Takht on here as well. It's dated 1878 and in there the actual document actually states that all the Sikhs should actually recite Jap Sahib, Japji Sahib, all the different Bani from the Guru Granth Sahib, but also it mentions that Chandi Divar should also be within the Nitnam as well. Very interesting. But also Shastra Vidya, the key aspect of Dasam Granth, is also to be understood by the Sikhs. 1897, we start finding in the Singh Sabha period that some Sikhs are a bit uncomfortable with some of the myths of, of, of Dasam Granth. And so therefore the Sodok Committee report in 1897 actually was written to make sure that the Granth was actually as it was. The Sodok Committee's role was not to actually look at the authenticity of the Dasam Granth, but to evaluate Dasam Granth, make a printed version of the Dasam Granth, but what they actually did was they also left out some of the Baniya which we find in some of the old recensions. And these Baniyas include Jandi or Bhagotiya Stottar, Ugadanti and a few other Baniya as well. 
However, these Banya are still recited by the Nahangs, Namtaris and other Sampraya there as well. And in Hayusa, the recent version of the Dasungrand had these Banya actually rewritten back into their copies. This is one of the first printed copies of the Dasungrand around the 1900s. What we're finding after 1900 is that the mindset of some of the Sikhs is changing. What we're finding is that people are still uncomfortable with the Hindu myths. So Dinja Singh Pashodia, who is a self-styled um, scholar, actually started nitpicking at some of the Bani of Dasam Granth. However, what he does do is refers to Guru Gobind Singh's Bani as Dasam Guru Granth. Very interesting. He calls it Dasam Guru Granth, but at the same time, he starts saying that some of the Banya should not be there. He also starts attacking the Guru Granth Sahib as well and starts taking out various aspects which he doesn't like. Bhagat Bani take, gets taken out and Rag Rab, Mala gets taken out as well. Eventually he's excommunicated from, excommunicated from the Banth due to his nefarious designs. However, the problem with Dejashin Pashorya was he has left a legacy with many, many Sikhs and many, many self-styled Sikhs as well. When we get to the Sikh Red Mirata, what we find is, it actually states in there, the Bani of the Ten Gurus, including the works of Bhai Nandlal, should be read. <laughs> However, like I said, the Pashorya legacy continued. Scholars like Samshir Singh Ashok, Ratan Singh Jaggi, Gyanin Park Singh, Gratej Singh, Institute of Sikh Studies, Kalaf Ghana, just bring the same, and the list goes on and on and on, who still to this day will never ever understand what the Dasam Granth is about because they have no Gyan of the Dasam Granth. Their attacks on the Dasam Granth is not based on any methodology, but because the Granth does not fit in with their view of thinking. It's as simple as that. However, in the 1950s and 60s, other research was done as well. Dr. Dalam Bal Ashta, Dr. Tulitjan Singh, Professor Piyala Singh Padam, Gani Harban Singh, and over 20 to 30 PhDs undertaking various universities proving the authenticity of the Dasam Granth. So therefore, when we get to this stage now, what we're saying is there should be no debates on the Dasam Granth because it is clear that Guru Gobind Singh wrote every single word. The Akal Takht actually had a Hukam Nama which said there should be no more discussions on Dasam Granth and hence discussions were banned since 1999. My particular thesis which I did was actually written around about 2000 and focused on the role of the Dasam Granth in Khalsa. In 2006 we had a conclave of various Sampriyade together to actually look at what should be done about these attacks on the Dasam Granth. And this was termed Zafar Nama Fata Divas. And they actually proclaimed many kind of proclamations at this time, which said that the attacks on the Dasam Granth had to stop. The Jatsadar of Akal Takht lifted the ban on Dasam Granth, and Akal Takht now, their Hukam Nama calls anti Dasam Granth forces as mischievous. So basically, anyone at this time now who is questioning the authenticity of the Dasam Granth, as per Kaltakht, is mischievous. And last year, an individual called Hardeep Singh Shyam wrote the first Western master's degree on Jirtapakyan in England as well. Now, after this conference today, what is going to happen for going forward? This is one of the first of the international seminars on Dasam Granth and the organizers of this event want this to be a reoccurring event for it to take place every six months or a year, etc. to make sure the message of the Dasam Granth gets through to those concerned. Myself, I've actually um, started completing the www.sridasamgranth.com website where a lot of material will be put on there related to the Dasam Granth and people who are curious enough can visit the Dasam Granth website to see more information. Later on this year, again, the first UK PhD on the Dasam Granth will be completed by my colleague Kamarup Singh. And the amount of evidence that he's actually found in relation to the Dasam Granth 
as is unparalleled to this very day. It will be one of those first to actually be seen in Sikh history. Myself, I will be completing my kitab, my book on the Dasm Granth. The title is not been chosen yet, but again, I will be actually looking at some of the areas which I've covered today, but I will go into more depth. I'm also involved with the UK Punjab Heritage Association in England as well, and we've just completed a digitalization pro project, which is looking at all the Punjabi manuscripts in private and public collections. And those collections include Guru Granth Sahib, Janam Sakis, Dasam Granth, etc. And that will be available online, hopefully by the end of this year as well. I'm going to leave you at the end with just some of the photos again, which I just showed you with, of all the different Dasam Granth recensions. It's quite simple. Dasam Granth was written by Guru Gobind Singh. There is no debate. There shouldn't be any more debates. However, I can still see certain individuals around the world who still claim that Dasam Dasam Pasha Guru Gobind Singh did not write the Guru Gobind, uh, didn't write the Dasam Granth. However, what we see is something contrary to that. So I'll leave you with some photographs of the Dasam Granth.